A plot is a graphical representation of data. So let's say we have uh, X and Y, and these are numbers in a table. What we want to do in this module is we're going to turn this into a graphical representation. X and Y maybe make a chart or plot. OK, the basic way to do that is just plot X comma Y. All right, but there's, there are more things that we can do to make really the information stand out and really highlight what's going on. Okay, one way to do that is just to change the style of the plot of the trends. So we can change the color, and there's a code for the color, the data style, and the line style. We'll use a few of those. Uh, some of the more common ones are listed toward the top. All right, we also want to use the hold on command to not replace a prior line. So let's just go ahead and run this one and just see uh, how it uh, plots out. Okay, so we have the x-axis, but we have two plots here. So we have one that we have as a dashed, and then the other one that's a solid line. So if you see here, we have a red dashed line. So if I come back up to the table, what I'm doing is I'm taking the red line from right here, okay, and then the dashed line. Uh, I can see that over here on the line style. All right, so we can mix and match those. That's the third thing that's going to go into the plot is we can put in the style of the line that we want. All right, uh, you can also use the help command if you like. Uh, this is available in MATLAB or Octave where you can see a little bit more about some of the options. The help plot is going to be very long. And uh, so I'm just going to highlight some of the very, maybe the most useful things just to get started. And then you can customize beyond that. So let's just go straight into the activities here. OK, I have a time x, y, and z. And I want to plot three lines with five data points each. So I've already defined the data. So let's just go ahead and start that. I can do time comma x, time comma y. Okay, I can plot those together. Or I can break it up into separate plot commands, but I need to use the hold on. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this one. I only need to do the hold on command once, and then I can plot all three. But for somebody, especially somebody who's colorblind, or um, maybe we want to just modify it so it's a little easier to pick out what's going on, we want to change the style of that. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just change this one to a blue dotted line, a red um, dash line, and then let's do a black. Uh, dot dash. Okay, so we can change those. We can also change the style of the points there to circles. Uh, we can change, I can put an X in there, for example, so that where the data is located are going to be X's, and then you have a, um, a dashed line in between those. All right, so there's just some options that you can use. We're going to customize the plots more. We're going to add things like X labels, Y labels, titles, and legends. And so I'll show you how to do that. You can also change things like the X limit or the Y limit. OK, so there's the Y limit and the X limit. All right, we can also make subplots. Subplots are very useful because we can put things on, you know, on the top and then the bottom and to be able to show them separate from each other. So for example, in the temperature control uh, for, the, for the incubator, we might want to show the heaters on the bottom and then the temperature on the top. And this is an example of where we've exported a static figure, multiple stag uh, static figures to make a movie. All right, but we can export these. Uh, you can export a single frame as like a PNG file or a JPEG or another type, two different 
two different options to do that. You can do print dash and then dpng and then the figure name. Or option two that's available in MATLAB is save as figure.png. I think you can also do it in Octave, but I just don't have uh, the right things installed. All right, so a couple different file extensions that you can use. The one that a lot of people don't know about is the .eps. And that's very good for generating figures for scientific journals, especially if you're going to be embedding it into a document. It's an encapsulated postscript. And it's very good for having no loss. You've basically taken the things, the commands that you'd be sending to a printer, and you encapsulate those, and you put them into your document. So it's very high resolution, as if it had come from you know, typed out text uh, in your document. If you use a PNG or JPEG, you're going to get some loss. Okay, so also you can figure out where it saved the file. After you run it, um, you can do PWD to get your current uh, working directory. All right, so it's going to be the one where you also have uh, this file located. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do uh, just an activity here. I'll try the code below and add a title, X label, and a Y label. And we'll adjust the Y range between these two values, negative 1 to 1.2. And we'll adjust the X range to be between 0 and 5. So try this on your own first. See if you can go back up there and use some of the commands to do it. I've given you this uh, template. Also, with a extra challenge here, try to split it into two subplots. All right, so I'm just going to run this. All right, so I have uh, legend is not correct. Okay, uh, it says plot data is empty. Set key symbols has no effect. Okay, so there's obviously some problems with this plot right now. So I just want to clean it up and you know add things like a title. Okay, uh, so this is going to be a sine and cosine. I'll just add that to my plot. Uh, I have between zero and six and a hundred points. This lin space you may not have seen that function before. That's linearly spaced values between zero and six. And the third thing says I want 100 points. And then I calculate the sine and the cosine. And then I want to plot those right here. Um, and then I'm going to have a legend. OK, so the other one that I want might be, all right, let's go ahead and put in cosine of x. And I'll change that to z. All right, I'm going to change the x limit to be between 0 and 5. And the y limit, I'm going to change between negative 1 and 1.2. All right, and then I can change the y label as well. All right, the y label is going to be, um, you know, this is, this is going to be y or z, or I could just type something like value, or I could leave it blank. OK, and this is going to be the x. All right, so let's go ahead and try this again. OK, it looks like there's a problem with the legend here. Let's just see if I can put that in as uh, I might have to do that as a s array there. OK, so problem right here. Let's see, plot data is empty. Setting key labels has no effect. OK, so it looks like I have a problem with the plot data itself. So let me go back and see if I can figure uh, that out. Looks like the problem is with this line width. I'm just going to remove this for now and then I'll see if I can add that back in later. That should work with MATLAB. I'm currently running in Octave right now. Okay, so there we have the Y and the Z. And I did need to just take out these square brackets. They're just separated by commas there. And then that's going to be Y and Z. And then um, let's see if we can split it into two subplots now. So I'll do subplot, and I'll do 2, comma 1, comma 1. So that means two rows, one column, 
and then this is going to be the first one. And then I'm going to have the second subplot. And now I don't need the hold on there. Okay, and then let's just see what that does. Okay, I need to separate the legend to put part of the legend up here. So let me go ahead and just separate that out. I'm going to copy that. I need to do it before I move on to the next one. So there it is with the legend. And let me put it right here. If I run this again, you can see I separated that out so that each one has its own individual legend. Now the other thing is the X scaling and the Y scaling. I need to include these for the first one as well. So I'll just go ahead and copy those in. So one of the nice things about subplots is you can see um, the data just on one plot by itself, but then you need to add some of the extra uh, features like X label, Y label. Typically I only add an X label to the bottom plot because they're typically the same for the X label. And then I can change the Y label value to something more meaningful. And in this case, I could say that's going to be Y. And then uh, this one is going to be Z. Okay, so here is uh, here are my two subplots, and you can see um, they. Uh, you know, I might want to change. Let me try the line width one more time. Sometimes you can use the abbreviation LW equals five. Let me just see. Oh no, that didn't work. Okay, that also works in MATLAB. Octave it has some different syntax there. Okay. Uh, well, there we have it. Okay, uh, I think we've done everything on this one. Let's go on to the next one. I just rerun that to generate it. Make a plot that comes from the lab's temperatures th with 30 seconds of data. The code below sets heater 1 to 70% and heater 2 to 100%. It collects data for 30 seconds in the list with TM and T1 and T2. So it's going to generate this. Let's go ahead and just generate um, this. I've got, all right, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this Arduino and then plug it back in. I think it was just uh, hadn't reset. Let me just see if that's the thing. OK, so it's going to collect for 30 seconds. And then I'm going to add something after this. So instead of just rerunning it 30 seconds each time, Let's just have a cell underneath it so that we can generate our plots and not worry about um, you know having to regenerate every time we want to regenerate the plots. Okay, so we'll make a plot and I'm going to do tm comma t1 and tm comma t2. So that's just going to be our most basic uh, plot right there. Okay, you can see the data, but let's go ahead and just visualize it and see how that's looking okay we turned on the heaters and you can see the temperature values increasing but now let's go ahead and just add some things to this to make it a little bit more uh, explainable all right uh, i'm going to separate these into i could do subplots if i wanted to okay have uh, two separate subplots like that or i think in this case because they're kind of on the same scale and measuring the same thing I'll just do a hold on in between them and then let's go ahead and just add some extra things to it. Like we can change the style. I'll do a red dash line and then a black uh, dotted line. Okay, and then maybe I want to put in the actual data points as well. So I'll just do those as circles or I could do it as a square for one of them. Okay, so let's add a, a legend to this. Legend, and that'll be T1 and then uh, T2. Okay, and all right. Um, and then let's see, I want maybe an X label, and I'll put time there, and a Y label, and that will be temperature. Okay, we could put a title on there as well. Most times you can just leave off the title, especially if you're going to be using it in a presentation. And then let's go ahead and save the figure as well. Okay, so if we come back up, 
I'm going to just look at the, okay, this print, and I'm going to copy that. And let's go ahead and use that at the end just to be able to save it. And this is going to be TC Lab. Okay, and this should show up in this uh, side over here. If not, you can go and get it from your run folder. Okay, so here it is, a PNG file, and you could insert that into a presentation or on a website or some other place. Okay, so it saved it as a, a PNG. It finally showed up here, and you can just double-click it and see it. All right, so let's go on down. I will make the plotting lines uh, modified to our liking. Okay, and um, you know, here was just some help that I gave you in case you wanted to start with a template, but we just went ahead and uh, generated this ourselves. All right, so there are many other types of plots available, bar charts, you can make histograms, you can do many other uh, types, uh, but this is just a very basic tutorial on a time series or plot, especially useful when we want to take large sets of data, you know, like this. Okay, this isn't a large set, but just gives an example. And then to turn it into something like this, it's easier to digest.